Thank you, Rhonda. Um, I think no. I see Hillary there too. Hillary Avalon. EJ. Maybe not. I'm here. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> here she is. Hi, Hilary. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit? You are part of the Dillon Beach Village as well? Yes. Um, okay. We have a house in the village. It's not our full time residence. Okay. Um, and yeah, and I'm part of the um, Dillon Beach neighborhood group as well. Awesome. Thank you. Norm, are you here? Norm? I see Norm listed. Yeah, I see him as well, but I don't know. Uh... Yeah, Norm, we just don't have sound for you. We have an unidentified meeting guest. Do we know who that is? I don't see on my side any uninvited meeting guest. There's no name. It's it a just Miranda says for me. meeting guest as the name. Um, right. Norm, you might want to come out and come back in if, if everyone else is having trouble hearing him. It mine shows that his mic is off. Is on mute, but I don't know. I think he's uh, trying to do the presentation, like trying to present his slides. He prepared those slides, so maybe he's having some. You know, Artie, if you want to um, move over to a Zoom meeting, you know, I did make that Zoom link. And I, well, let's see if we can get Norm back in. OK, is that better, Norm? Um, yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yay. Okay. Good. Thank okay. you for your patience, everybody. OK. okay. Um, now I just need to see the screen. Or do you have it up? I will bring it again, Norm. Okay. 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 Still. Still hear me? Yep, you are good. Okay. 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 Uh, yes. Good evening. Um, sorry for that. Um, yeah, Norm Hanchi. I'm uh, with Questa Engineering, um, civil engineer, and uh, um, the project manager for the study that we've done. Um, it's a there's a lot of information in the report. Uh, you can tell, and uh, it'll be tough to get. You know, it may take you know more than one sitting. 
um, uh, with the group here to get through everything and questions and so forth. But uh, what I've done is I've pulled some of the graphics and some of the tables from the report and um, in you know this presentation here, I'd like to cover these uh, points that I've listed here, the kind of the background research and the studies surveys that we did, the problem assessment and this is basically assessing you know what the what the uh, status and conditions and issues are with uh, septic systems, estimated wastewater flows for collected wastewater for those alternatives uh, where a sewerage option is being considered. Um, go through the different wastewater management alternatives, cost estimates that we developed, and then the ranking. Uh, and this is not, uh, we're not selecting a project. I want to make clear of that. We're uh, just trying to bring forward the information so that the community can uh, understand, uh, review, uh, you know, uh, and absorb and, and work with the, uh, you know, what, what we have uh, developed uh, through our studies. Um, uh, the background research, um, th there's quite a bit of county files on septic systems in the village. Uh, we went through all of those that had records, I think looked at probably close to 100 um, systems that had some uh, permit record, some historical record, uh, and new uh, septic system designs. Uh, we looked at all of those to get a real clear understanding of how, how uh, the on-site systems have been de uh, developed, used, and issues with them over the years. Um, we also reviewed water quality information from beach surveys, uh, groundwater, uh, and water quality uh, data for the uh, Coast Springs water system, uh, which draws their uh, uh, drinking water from the uh, Dillon Beach or Dillon Creek uh, Aquifer there at the um, at, at the base of the community, and we conducted a homeowner questionnaire survey. We'll talk a little bit about that, but more detail on all of these uh, topics are in the uh, are in the study. Um, yeah, ne next slide, Artie. Yeah. So uh, just to kind of orient uh, everyone, the the study area was really that area defined in by the red line. So we we, we um, um, uh, understood that the, the the real interest of the study was the the village, but we included uh, all of the uh, residential properties in the Cliff Street extension and that portion of Oceana Drive uh, that are uh, also using septic systems. Um, on the uh, uh, map you see here, north is uh, Oceana Marin subdivision. The, uh, they have a community collection and wastewater treatment system, which is located up on, uh, up on the hill, up there to the east of the um, Oceana Marin. They have wastewater ponds. They have an 11 acre leach field, which is in the top of this slide. Um, I've also kind of indicated, um, yeah, just uh, the Dillon Creek and the watershed area that is the prominent feature of the, of the uh, uh, Dillon Beach area. Uh, next slide. So in the process of, uh, reviewing and, and understanding existing septic system practices. Uh, we put together here just for illustration purposes what some of the, the uh, less constrained, more favorable sites in the, um, in, uh, the village are. Um, and in, yeah, in the first slide, this is uh, where there's sufficient area of the, or the, the lot sizes are, are very small as, as you all know. Uh, but in some cases, they have enough yard area where they can have uh, kind of a conventional septic tank and uh, leach field system. Uh, the sands uh, below the systems are quite deep. Um, and I'll talk about that um, in just a second. Um, but uh, a big issue uh, is the, the, the small space and the ability to meet setbacks to utilities to roads to buildings property lines and so forth uh, next uh, slide yeah okay so in kind of the more constrained situations 
uh, where there's really no no lot area to to speak of. Uh, there are cases where, as you see in this uh, diagram, the septic system and the leach field are squeezed in between the building and the street, uh, typically uh, or often in a parking area with a, 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 the, the most leach field that they can squeeze in. Uh, there's been some innovative use of auger holes that have extended beyond below uh, shallower leaching trenches to get more capacity for the leach field systems. <clears throat> we found in reviewing the files that there were about 40 deep borings that had been done uh, mostly by Rich Lincoln and his son Russ, I guess, over the years, and uh, as well as other consultants who have worked there, but Rich uh, by far the, you know, has done most of the work. Um, and this was pretty helpful to us to understand <clears throat> what's going on under the under the ground in the sands below the houses and the leach field systems. And we found uh, the depths to to the uh, underlying clay or sandstone that that uh, is beneath the, the the sand deposits there to be about five to twenty uh, feet or so below uh, the leaching systems, which is a good amount of sand to absorb, filter, and disperse the, the, um, the effluent. Um, next slide. Okay, so using um, those borings, and, and if on this, this uh, slide, you'll see the circles. Those, each of those uh, designate where there was an actual soil boring done to, in some cases, up to 30 feet deep. Uh, most of them were in the 10 to 15 feet deep. Um, and so on this, if you look closely, which we can't see on this slide here, um, but we uh, determined and then mapped the depth uh, at those locations, the depth to the bedrock or the clay that underlines the, underlies the sand. And then we determined based upon the uh, ground surface elevation what the elevation of the bedrock or the clay is uh, at all of those uh, uh, spots uh, uh, throughout the, the village. So this was, uh, we, we didn't know going in that we were gonna find this much information, but this was pretty helpful to be able to then draw a contour map, which is what you see there. Those dashed lines are the approximate elevation just as though that was like a surface, like a hillside, you had a, a topographic map. This is a topographic map, <clears throat> those the dashed red lines, topographic map of the, the bedrock underneath the sands. And this is important for us to know because from that water that percolates down at any location will, will generally percolate straight down through the, the, the sand, the permeable sands. And then when it, encounters the clay or bedrock below, it will then move in a direction that's at right angles to the contour of the bedrock slope. So that tells us in different parts of the village with this contour map, the, uh, the direction of groundwater flow that's from percolating rainfall, but it's also the, the same direction that the uh, uh, septic tank effluent will flow as it percolates down and mixes with any, any percolating rainwater and then begins to flow down. So what you see is off to the, uh, would be the Northwest side of the village. The direction of flow is pretty much westerly toward the beach and the ocean. And then as you get swing around to the uh, South and the East side of the village, the direction of flow is indicated by this this uh, subsurface information and contouring. Uh, it is then directed uh, in uh, toward um, uh, Dillon Creek, and the important feed issue here is that that's Dillon Creek is uh, the at this point is uh, flows through a a fairly good sized aquifer, freshwater aquifer that is the source of uh, drinking water for the Coast Springs water system uh, by uh, operated and owned by Cal Water Service Company. Uh, their main water supply has historically been what we call, uh, is called well number four. You see kind of right down in the center there. 
uh, that's about a 24 foot deep well in the alluvium and the sands at the uh, right adjacent to Dillon Creek. And then there's a second well that um, is uh, owned uh, presently by the Dillon Beach Resort. It was installed in 1989. It's been used um, by uh, as a supplementary source of drinking water by Coast Springs in their system. But I don't believe it's been fully uh, incorporated into their system at the present time. Okay, next slide. Um, one of the other things uh, we did was the, uh, because of the deep sands, there's very little, uh, there isn't a high groundwater problem on the site, except where the, the historically the area has been graded for roads and development. And this is, there's two areas where the groundwater in wet uh, winters, and this was, these were photos taken off of Google Street View and I believe it was February or March of 2019, a pretty wet rainfall year. Um, and this is where the sands and the underlying clay, so, uh, clay and, and bedrock uh, come close together. And you have what, what you see here on in the upper photo, Beach Avenue. This is water that's groundwater that's really seeping out of the, the um, sandy hill slope to the right and then flowing down the street to a storm drain and then to the beach. And in the lower photo on Cliff Steep Street, and maybe a lot of you have, have observed this, but uh, water, the, the, the sands also, because of the grading of Cliff Street, uh, the sands pinch out and that's where groundwater flowing on the bedrock surface below comes to the, to the uh, surface at the edge of the road uh, Cliff Street, and then follows the roadside ditch on down uh, to the um, to the south. Uh, next slide, please. This is a cross section that uh, um, shows um, what I was just talking about. If you look in the center, you can see uh, Beach Avenue, and that's where you have a pinching out of the sand over the bedrock, and um, and that's where that's that's really the cause of the water that seeps out from the 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 water that collects in the sands from up above on Cypress Park and on up the hill. Um, as you get down to the right, you can see how the depth of the aquifer, the Dillon Creek aquifer, we're calling it. Uh, those are deep sand deposits with some sand and gravel lens that have been uh, determined through drilling in that area in the past. And that's as deep as about 45 feet or so at the at the deepest part. And that's that's the area that uh, provides water, uh, uh, drinking water for the wells uh, that I mentioned, the well number four, Coast Springs, and then the Dillon Beach Resort well. It's sometimes also referred to as the Klein well uh, the owner of the property for some period of time. Uh, next. Uh, so uh, we looked at the water quality data for the uh, aquifer as indicated by sampling that's done for the Coast Springs water system. And what you see in this, and this is a, a graphic from the report, shows um, over a period of time from 2015 to the present. In blue, you have the water quality uh, test results for nitrate from well number four. And in red, that's the uh, nitrate concentration in the uh, treated drinking water uh, that uh, produced by Cal, Cal Water. They have a treatment system, but treatment systems don't remove nitrate. So if you have nitrate, in your groundwater uh, or in your water supply. It's not removed by the treatment processes, uh, conventional treatment processes. And this is important because there is a drinking water limit of 10 milligrams per liter for uh, nitrate as measured as nitrogen. Uh, that's because of the impact, uh, it's a public health uh, uh, impact to uh, infants. Um, there may be other nitrate 
uh, impacts that are being you know, still being researched, but the primary reason is because it it uh, interferes nitrate interferes uh, with the uh, it the uh, um, oxygen in the bloodstream and is a a a, a cause of what's called uh, blue baby or methemoglobinemia uh, in infants. So what you see here is that the there are uh, regular uh, and continuing spikes in nitrate, not at the not reaching as high as the drinking water level, but getting above four or five up to six milligrams per liter. That kind of uh, concentration in the water source triggers more frequent sampling by the water supplier by Coast Springs. They are, I believe, they're on a, a quarterly sampling program and I think maybe they do their drinking water on a monthly basis they sample for nitrate so it's there's there's no indication that the drinking water level drinking water limit has been reached but it's getting to a, a typically seven milligrams per liter which is the, the, some of the concentrations are getting close to that's usually a, a trigger level for some sort of uh, uh, action to address the the source or the treatment for nitrate. Uh, next. Okay. Um, so in the uh, part of our study, we also uh, distributed a questionnaire survey uh, to collect uh, various in, you know, sorts of information from individuals who wanted to voluntarily and anonymously return the forms. We had about 52, I believe, that, re, uh, that responded to the survey. And just showing here, this is this information is in the report. We asked about the levels of concern. And there was, you can see here, that there was ticket, we, we divided it to the west side of North Street and to the east side of North Street, because we see that, that, that there's a difference in terms of where the drainage goes from the east side of the village and the west side of the village, as I pointed out earlier. But in general, a low level of concern about the operation and functioning of their septic systems, uh, some uh, concern, um, and it was not specifically identified, but some concerns about the watershed impacts or the groundwater impacts or the offsite impacts, let's say, of, of septic systems. Uh, we also asked some questions. This was out without the full detail of the alternatives that are described in our report um, of the, 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 the interest of those responding to the survey uh, relative to uh, maintaining the status quo or um, a, a program to upgrade, manage the existing on-site wastewater systems. Uh, community sewerage and, and a hybrid. And so there was uh, some interest, you can see that. Uh, we realize this isn't the entire community, but it's a it's a, it, a snapshot, I, I, I guess, of a, a, uh, a fraction, about 30%, 35% of the, the community that responded to the survey. Um, next slide. So the alternatives that we put together, we, we felt from the, the findings of the groundwater, um, groundwater flow direction, the increasing or, uh, or, or recurring impact levels of nitrate in the groundwater that, that uh, we should define the east side of the village for special attention, okay? So the, what, what uh, we're showing here is that we've got alternatives one, two, three, and four, with one being the status quo uh, for all, all properties in the village, Bay Street, uh, Cliff Street Extension, and um, uh, Oceana Drive. Alternatives uh, two, we had one alternative, which would be a program to upgrade, monitor, maintain existing systems. We know that from our, our research that probably about 45% of the septic systems in the village are what we'd call class two. They've been upgraded with a modern septic tank and some sort of an engineered or designed drain field. 
in the last 25 or 30 years. Uh, but about 45% also have no records. And we would, uh, uh, we, so we don't, the, those are likely to be a, a non-conforming older style septic system. We know that from the files that uh, a lot of the systems that have been upgraded or replaced, we're replacing seepage boxes and what you would call cesspools. So, so upgrading uh, with the management program is what alternative two would be across the board, kind of the same approach that has been used individually by properties uh, over the, the last you know, 25 or 30 years and that for that 45% of the homes that I mentioned. Um, and then a second alternative to B would be to take a step toward addressing the nitrate impacts on the east side of the of the village by including a, a nitrogen removal system. So this is a adding you know, more going beyond a simple septic tank to a treatment system. And there are some small treatment systems that that can uh, it probably be difficult in, in a number of properties, but they can be incorporated to uh, remove the nitrogen levels by about 50%. So that's was alternative to 2 and 2A two and 2B. Uh, then alternatives 3A and 3B, we're looking at a more comprehensive community sewerage collection system uh, for uh, in alternative 3A, it would be for all the properties in the service area, including Oceana Drive and, and the uh, Cliff Street extension. Uh, alternative 3B would just be limited to the village area uh, and leave status quo for the, the Oceana Drive, Bay Street, or Bay, Bay Drive and Cliff Street, um, where the lots are larger, they uh, are more removed from the uh, areas of, of um, most concern and impact. And then alternative four was a, a hybrid that included some uh, on-site wastewater management for the west side of the village, sewerage of the east side of the village, and then status quo for uh, Bay Drive and Oceana Drive. Okay, next slide. So again, just briefly, alternatives 2A and 2B. So this is up, up, uh, upgrading the on-site systems. And when we talk about a management program, this would be where there would be uh, some sort of oversight authority, uh, likely uh, what would we call an on-site wastewater disposal zone or management district. Um, and what would make probably most sense would be under the you know, the County Board of Supervisors, the rule, the, the state uh, laws and regulations are in place to allow that to occur. And that would allow perhaps funding, streamlining of the permitting process and maybe very uh, specific designs, but again, loans, loans and possibly grants to assist in, in having a systematic upgrading of systems. Uh, as compared to the status quo, which is individuals doing it on their own at the, you know, as as over time, uh, perhaps when houses sell or if something just fails uh, and has to be replaced or someone is undertaking a building plan. So, um, so under alternative 2A, it would be just a class two system upgrades class 2B showing kind of a first cut uh, the, in the green. Those are the properties that uh, would likely require some advanced treatment to address the nitrate issue, issue which we designed as uh, or defined as part of uh, uh, the objective of alternative 2B. Okay, next slide. So um, for the alternatives 3A, B, and 4, that would include uh, wastewater collection, we went through the process of developing wastewater flow estimates for the numbers of parcels that would be collected under those alternatives, the assumed number of, of properties, uh, because that would generate a wastewater flow for collection to a, a pump station 
uh, and it would be conveyed to and and and, and uh, discharged to the Oceana Marin system or connected to their system for processing, treatment, and disposal in the you know, by uh, that system. So you can see here we listed uh, for the different parcels. We're using a unit flow of so that's a daily flow from a per, per residence of 75 gallons per day, which is if if you have any. Um, knowledge or working with septic systems, you'll see that designing a individual septic systems, a higher flow rate is used uh, as part of a, a standard for a, a single system. But as part of a community system, the there's an averaging effect, and these are these numbers are consistent with what Oceana Marin has found over a number of years monitoring flows. Uh, per residence in their system. Um, but as you can see, we've tallied the, 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 the flows at the bottom and then 21,000 gallons per day is the, the build out estimate for the Oceana Marin, Oceana Marin wastewater system for the development for the Oceana Marin area, the existing service area. So the, the infilling and build out of remaining parcels and then the combined flows are the bottom line that would be combined build out existing Oceana Marin, build out of Oceana Marin, and the additional flows from Dillon Beach Village for the different alternatives. Okay, next. This, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit now about that Oceana Marin system because it's critical to those alternatives, the sewage alternatives. And this is the annexation map. And you can see the up in green, they, they, parts of Oceana Marin were, I guess, annexed or built out at different different phases, but it, it takes in all of the properties in Oceana Marin. And then down toward the center and the bottom, you see some uh, red uh, bordered lots. So there's 12 parcels in the upper part of the village on uh, Ocean View Drive, just on the uh east side of north street there 12 that have been annexed and have been connected to the north marin sewer system um, uh, in recent years okay next this is a diagram of their what their wastewater system what the oceana marin wastewater system consists of the dillon beach village areas uh, shown there on the right in that red uh, diagram and then those in blue, you see those are the the twelve parcels from the from the village that uh, connect into the Oceana Marin system, and they follow a blue line, which is a gravity sewer, comes down to the um, bottom there where it meets a, a, a red line, and that's a, that's the main lift station for all of Oceana Marin. So all of the sewage from Oceana Marin comes by gravity sewers, mostly six inch sewers down to the bluff there where they have a, a lift station. They have two sets of duplex pumps that pump up to 100 gallons a minute. And then the red line headed up to the top there, that's their force main. And uh, the dashed red line is a proposed or planned uh, duplicate force main uh, routing for part of that the uh, their force main because they are they have a uh, a study and assessment a master plan assessment that was done in 2015 by Newt Engineering uh, long long standing civil engineers from San Rafael and they identified uh, some upgrades to the system uh, and one of those was to to provide a, a duplicate. Uh, basically a redundant force main going all the way up the hill because they thought that, that was one of the weak points in the system. Um, up at the top of the hill, there are two ponds, about three acre ponds, uh, and they, one is uh, has aerators, it's an aerated uh, wastewater pond. The second pond uh, is a storage pond, and they drain out of that second pond to the line that goes horizontally to the left to an 11 acre leach field that is uh, downhill toward the, the Estero uh, on the backside of uh, uh, over the hill from Oceana Marin. 
So the connection for to the wastewater system for the Dillon Beach uh, Village, uh, if that uh, if either or any of those three alternatives are are pursued, uh, would be connecting at the same point where the twelve uh, houses at the upper part of Oceana Drive, um, Ocean View Drive, uh, connect to. There's a manhole in the street. It would be a collection to. Uh, well, let me let's go to the next slide and I can describe it more. This is the first the leach field area. This is um, this would require expansion, but there's enough area and large amount of area between trenches in this leach field to accommodate. We estimate enough for all of the the different uh, flows that would be associated with alternatives three A, three B, and four. Um, Next slide. So this shows for, and I just picked out alternative 3B, which is just this, this what a sewage collection system for the village area only would, would consist of. And in red, you see those are gravity lines. So basically we looked at gravity, uh, a conventional gravity sewer, a step effluent sewer where you'd retain a septic tank and just pump the effluent or collected by gravity, uh, and a pressure sewer system where you'd get rid of the septic tank, put in a grinder pump system, and then it would be a network of pressure pipes that would, would collect all of the flow. Uh, uh, and we determined that the, the best approach and the least costly approach would be gravity sewers where the septic tanks would be abandoned and, and backfilled uh, uh, according to code and the houses along the the uh, the streets along the sewer lines would connect to the gravity sewers leading to a main lift station uh, or central lift station for the village area down adjacent to the restroom the, the beach restroom um, and at that point the collected sewer there would be large tanks uh, pumps in that tank and backup generator and and so forth and there would be then a force main a four inch line would go back up either up cliff street uh, ocean view drive to north street and then um, take the collected sewage into the north to the oceana marin system which is the dash blue line on oceana drive uh, so this the sewers would be in the streets. Uh, they'd maintain appropriate setbacks from the water lines, which are also in the streets. Most of the properties would be able to connect by gravity from the house, uh, but there would be some percentage we didn't figure out exactly, but uh, 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 possibly 25% uh, to maybe 30% of the houses because they're down, they would be downhill from a street and the sewers in the street above the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, plumbing in the house. It would uh, require a small ejector pump to pump the sewage up to the street, which is a fairly common re um, requirement in air hilly areas that have sewer lines. Okay, next. Slide. So in this slide is alternative four, uh, where we have this is the hybrid approach where uh, in blue there we've uh, indicated the west kind of the northwest side of the village uh, uh, would be under this alternative would remain uh, with use of on site systems and only those on the east side would be would have a gravity collection system to the same location for a, a main lift station and a force main up the up the hill to connect to Oceana Marin. The an on-site management program would be uh, developed or implemented for the west side uh, to uh, bring about kind of systematic upgrade and management and financing and funding of on-site uh, septic system solutions for that that area. And also, I think, as I mentioned before, the Oceana Drive would remain, uh, those homes with larger lots there would be not included in these improvements or in the management 
program as would uh, would uh, Cliff Street extension. Okay, next. Um, so these are the estimates, uh, the cost estimates uh, for the different alternatives. Uh, with the no project alternatives, it, uh, we couldn't really estimate a anything more than what the typical cost is, uh, would is likely to be for individual properties uh, having to deal with uh, uh, upgrading their system uh, when whenever that you know came about. Uh, in the range of zero to sixty thousand dollars, and we did our our cost estimating. We we spent some time uh, with um, uh, Mike Giamona of uh, City Sewer to go over the assumptions we were making. He he's worked on in the past, worked on almost every type of on-site septic system improvement there in in much of Dillon Beach Village. So we we relied upon his um, uh, uh, in, input. To, to fine tune some of our numbers. Um, for the on-site uh, management upgrade, uh, A, 2A and 2B, uh, there, those are the costs there, the total costs are on the left, and then the average cost per, per ESD, uh, ESD meaning equivalent single family dwelling. Uh, so that's a, a single family house cost or some Fraction or some some multiple of that for the commercial properties, that being the the deli um, restaurant cafe there at um, at the resort, uh, the rest beach restroom, um, community sewerage to uh, Oceana Marin. So the costs there, uh, you can see they range uh, from somewhere in the seven million up to ten million uh, plus for the um, the full community uh, sewerage for all properties in the study area. And what goes into that cost are our estimates of constructing the sewers, the um, lift station, the force main. Uh, and then uh, since the Oceana Marin collection system, main lift station, force main, treatment plant, and leach field are already constructed, there is a what we call a buy-in cost or a connection fee. And North Marin Water District, who operates the system, has a uh, an established $30,000 per connection, per residential connection. So we included that as the buy-in cost to, the, uh, to be able to use, uh, utilize, and share, and be part of the Oceana Marin system. And I should mention, we did we did add a separate cost for the leach field expansion. So leach field expansion plus the sewer system uh, are, are, are detailed costs that would be built by the project. The buy-in costs of $30,000 per residence and, um, and, or per, per, and multiples of that for commercial properties. That would be fees paid, and the uh, that would go toward the projects. There are a number of capital improvement projects that are needed for the Oceana Marin system. I mentioned the the redundant force main going up the hill. They have some repair work to do on uh, the ponds. Uh, there is some also some redundancies and some uh, fail safe features at the main lift station. Uh, those would be uh, the, that the, the buy-in fees, the buy-in costs from Dillon Beach Village uh, being annexed or incorporated into the system would provide a, a funding that would cover a large uh, portion of those uh, uh, capital improvements on the Oceana Marin system. Okay, next slide. Uh, the last thing we did was a ranking of alternatives, and this is really just for discussion purposes, but it's a way of uh, kind of laying out what are the things to think about on the left, the comparison factor, regulatory compliance, environmental impacts, reliability, energy, land use impacts, capital costs, O&M, operation maintenance costs, um, 
And then we went through just, you know, and ranked from one to six, six being the highest ranking and the highest score for a particular, uh, the project under each of those criteria. So the, the points are distributed one through six um, to each of the uh, alternatives and results in a, 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 a way to look across the board, multiple factors. Um, granted, this is the assessment our uh, team uh, applied from our professional judgment. Other people might uh, have different opinions on some of the factors. We used objective information such as for cost and O&M. Those were just objective data. There were other uh, reliability is uh, uh, are issues that uh, one engineer or another might have a slightly different uh, take on that. Um, and and and. Uh, someone maybe in the community may look at these and say i you know i would weight the capital cost you know more than any of the other factors so so this is really just a kind of a, a uh, you know a starting point for the discussion but as you can see the the village alternative 3b was by our assessment uh, ranked as the just slightly uh, higher by this uh, uh, ranking system uh, as the what we call the apparent best alternative, but it's by no means something that is selected uh, or you know decided upon. So this is this is uh, where this analysis takes us. Um, I didn't mention on the go back to the one slide, uh, RT, because one the other uh, issue on cost and I, uh, is the uh, annual operation and maintenance cost. So there's one one cost is building the project. The other cost uh, is the recurring annual sewer fees. And what the 1,296 you'll see in the alternatives three, A, B, and four, that's the current uh, annual cost for uh, properties connected to the Oceana Marin system. And that goes up and down from year to year based upon their assessment of their, their uh, upcoming costs and so forth. The, uh, for the on-site wastewater management upgrade programs, we looked at the fees that are typically, uh, or costs that are typically incurred by um, septic system owners in the county who have a system maybe falling under an operating program, operating permit program of the county where it requires an annual inspection and a reporting and some yeah, basically managed um, uh, 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 maintenance and inspection and oversight of the system. And it would probably be higher where there's a treatment system for the nitrogen removal, which you've indicated in alternative 2B. So I think that uh, brings us to the end of my slides. If you want to go to questions and answers right now, and there's a lot of stuff and I went probably went pretty fast but um now we're thank far you. away yeah thank you Norm uh, before I start I have a question from Eric um and he asked about the map remember in the the contour map that you showed in the beginning of the presentation his question is how do you know the direction of wastewater flow shown on your map so the contour I think he's talking about this one is that right, Eric? How do we know the contours? Yeah, how do you know the direction of wastewater flow shown on your map? Right. Okay. So, so the, um, we use the uh, the county uh, has a very good website with uh, with topographic information down to two foot contour intervals, and so we use that to establish the surface ground surface elevation at each of those locations where we found from the files uh, evidence of a boring, a, a soil boring. And then, so we know the top of the soil or the ground surface at the soil boring, and we know the elevation at that point. And then from the soil log that was in the file, if it was 18 feet to a bedrock or a clay zone, we subtract that from the surface elevation. And then that gives us the ground or the, the bedrock surface. 
then the the uh, the principle that uh, applies for water movement it's the same as it would be on if this if those were ground surface elevation water moves uh, in a direction perpendicular to the contour. So all of those arrows are at right angles to the contour lines that they're crossing. The same would, would, would apply for the groundwater percolates down and it, uh, when it reaches the, the underlying restrictive layer, whether it's clay or bedrock, then it starts to move laterally and it moves laterally in a direction that's at right angles to the contour at that location. So this is an approximation, but with 40 points, uh, data points out there, we felt we had a pretty good, uh, pretty good I idea of the, um, the shape uh, of the contours, the bedrock surface, and then from that, the direction of groundwater flow. Now, we do know that on North Street, the reason those 12 properties on North Street are connected to North to Oceana Marin is because they, the ground, uh, the bedrock surface is much shallower there. It's less than, I think, eight feet or so. And it's because there's a bit of a ridge uh, uh, in the bedrock surface at that point. And um, yeah, it, may, it may be a sharper bend in the ridge than we see there, but that's why if you go to the north and west, it's around, it's, it's on that, you know, it's, it's around the, the bend, so to speak, in that, in that ridge. And, um, and that's, so the, those, there, there's definitely a bedrock condition there that is, that's kind of the, the, I call it a ridge, but we don't, we don't, it's, it, it's, it's really just the divide um, between the north, uh, northwest and the southeast side. If I could interject with a further question, um, the arrows seem to show that what three or four lots to the east of North Street is where there's a flow that's not towards the uh, Coast Springs wells. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's so. So this was a very conservative uh, approximation, and in the report we discuss the fact that where that where that divide actually occurs down North Street could be shifted more toward where you see that cross section line C C prime in that direction. But what we but what we do know is that water that uh, that that the the aquifer and the water that uh, I think you saw in one of the photos there water seeps out uh, and it follows the drainage ditch and then it it runs south toward the Aquifer. So the, the the sand aquifer does extend over there, but defining that point is uh, would I think take more more work. But so this was a conservative uh, first uh, approximation, but we did qualify that in the report, indicating that that is something that would uh, should be evaluated if in fact the the attention for a, a, a decision on east west sides of the the village is is um, going to be made that 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 should be defined much more closely am i right norm that the goal is to keep wastewater flows from going into the dillon creek aquifer correct correct mm -hmm. yeah um any other question if you don't have any other question, then I'll take the question from the um, some of the members that they sent it to us. If I have one. Sure, please go ahead. Uh, this is Jan. I just, um, I, I think my biggest question is, how is it that the county presents the uh, updated sewage system in the area and applies a $54,000 bill to each of the residents. Mm -hmm. And how is that expected to be paid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Um, so, so what, what the uh, cost estimates don't in, include is 
uh, and I'll, I'll use the Marshall example, um, and, but it's, it's fairly common in other small community projects like this. In the Marshall system, the average cost was in the low 40s. Okay, and I don't know, are you familiar with the Marshall system? That's the, it was done in 2008 along the, uh, um, the Marshall Mile there by the boat works and up to Ho Hog Island. Um, oh. And then, and then, and then the project, they were able to obtain grant funding for uh, about 50% of that. So it, the end, the cost that ended up being a cost to the property owners was $19,000. This was for the first phase of Marshall. And then that uh, $19,000 was financed uh, through a low interest loan. Uh, in the second phase of Marshall, it was a little bit higher. I believe it was $23,000 uh, financed through bonds. And so that resulted in a, uh, a repayment uh, program for the property on the formation of an assessment district, and then a repayment at uh, the at the rate of, uh, you know, I, I believe it was like twelve or fourteen hundred dollars per year paid on the taxes over 20 years, I know for phase one, and I don't recall the the um, the loan period for uh, phase two, but that's how the so the uh, yeah to 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 be feasible, there would have to be some substantial grant funds uh, obtained to bring the the cost per parcel down. I would think somewhere in the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range for uh, a, an assessment district, and then a bond or low interest loan to extend those payments out to pay out over time then extend it on to your property tax bill and that would be on the property tax bill right and that would be and that would be subject to a 51 percent vote of the community it can't it can't be done without a vote of the community okay. those those people who would be uh benefiting and connected to what you know whatever the system you know, turned out to be okay thank you Any other question do we have? If you don't have any other questions, then I will take the questions that we received. Um, the first question that I have is, since the recent study indicated no elevation in contaminants, are any changes necessary in Dillon Beach? Um, I can answer this question. Um, so actually, we did not see any elevation in contaminants in the recent study because we did not go out and did the microbial source tracking. Um, that was because we projected that it's going to rain. We need at least four to five feet of water in the storm drains to go and sample from there. So it was the fourth driest period consecutive fourth dress period, we were not managed to go out and sample in the storm drains. Um, so we did not um, go for the source tracking study to see the source of the fecal contamination. So it's really uncertain right now at this point of time to see whether any change is necessary in Dillon Beach or not. Uh, do you wanna add anything else to that, uh, Norm? Yeah, so so the it wasn't uh, in reading that question it wasn't clear if the <clears throat> um, what what contaminants and what sampling was was being uh, talked about but so th there has been beach water quality sampling for 20 plus years and that's uh, that's never um, uh, been shown the beach water quality has never shown any impact um, uh, in exceeding the the beach uh, uh, water quality standards that are set by the state. Uh, there is a pond that forms seasonally uh, that has uh, been uh, sampled a few times and that has shown high coliform concentrations and probably mostly to and dogs yeah. and animals, yeah. Um, 
but the other so the other data we had was from the groundwater data but which is from directly from sampling done by coast springs and i think our we uh what we've seen through the, then that 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 nitrate data is the one that we focused on because that's it's a it's a drinking water issue and it's a septic system issue because it is it comes in fairly high concentrations um, from organic nitrogen and ammonium in um, urine. So um, so the and so we looked at the the record uh, over a number of years and it's just a recurring. Uh, drops off in the in the winter when there's dilution flows from the watershed and rises in the summer when there's less uh, inflow from uh, freshwater inflow from the hills and more influence of the groundwater that's a constant source or and, and the return flow from effluent um, uh, percolating into the into the village area so so uh, it, it, it's up and down from year to year, but the fact that uh, that it has been sh has been found and within the last five or six years, uh, several times at uh, over you know fifty percent to the of the the drinking water standard. That's what triggers more frequent sampling. Um, so we felt that that there you know there there is still uh, uh, I think an un uh, unaddressed concern about the, the the nitrate loading. Thank you, Norm. Um, any other, um, do you have any other question regarding that or shall we move on to the next question? Do you guys have any other question regarding that or shall we, shall I move to the next question? No, we're fine. You're fine. Okay. The second question that we have is, since the recent study indicated no elevation in contaminants, and I believe it's they are talking about bacteriological as well as uh, chemical here, nitrates, are we responding to concern of future septic issues? And if so, is there a way to put those concerns to rest without changing the existing infrastructure? For example, implement annual testing. I believe there are programs like this in other West Marines. Towns. So I think it's very similar to um, what Norm mentioned in the first um, question itself. Um, and um, that um, we are already doing testing actually um, in terms of the beach monitoring. We run that program April till October of each year. And um, in terms of the nitrate, um, um, as Norm emphasized in the first um, question itself, that future increase in the occupancy will definitely increase the nitrate loading and it needs urgency for changes to on-site wastewater treatment practices. Um, so pretty much that's what I would like to answer to that question. Norm, do you wanna add anything else to it? Uh uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, the yeah we identified that, and and I don't think there can be any doubt that septic systems do generate nitrate, nitrogen, and the the location and the conditions are, are uh, in such that that they're contributing at some level to the nitrate conditions in in the aquifer and water taken in by the wells. Um, but Dillon Creek has a large 400 acre watershed. There's other activities in the watershed, uh, animal grazing and so forth. And so undoubtedly there's some nitrogen coming from the watershed. Uh, that's not something that we sampled, but that's something that could be sampled if you know those questions uh, linger. Uh, and, and I think that would be a, a valid uh, activity to, you know, that, uh, to, um, to to engage in, I think this as soon as possible, um, because that I mean that's that's those are samples easy to take to 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 drill other wells and to sample at other locations for uh, for a groundwater study would be more involved and um, and and uh, in, in incur more cost. The sampling of those wells is routine now by uh, Cal Water for the Coast Springs water system, so those data will. 
will be available. Um, I think that the there's uh, uh, I think a plan to to engage with the regulatory agencies, the regional board, and probably also the division of drinking water uh, to to uh, to get their input and um, opinions or policies or, or direction on um, how to how to go forward with addressing or um, the the the, uh, the water quality nitrate issue. Thank you, Norm. Um, third question I have is regarding if we do need to change uh, Dillon Beach septic tanks, can the affected properties join an existing sewer system? And I think this is already covered by alternatives 3A, 3B, and 4 in the study, which proposed connection to the Oceana Marine Wastewater System. Actually, 12 houses on Oceana View Drive have previously been annexed and connected to the Oceana Marine Water Wastewater Study. Yeah. So uh, I, I would add to that that you know, we have met with and North Marin Water District, uh, we toured this, the facilities with them. They provided us with their uh, master plan and we incorporated that information in the analysis. And um, uh, they, they are concerned and I think there's been some correspondence on this. Uh, they're concerned about because they have uh, they have capital improvements, they have their they're stretched fairly thin with the funding uh, from the small service area that they have, and they're concerned about taking on additional connections to the system. Um, I think they might not have understood in our uh, that that the the connection fees uh, that that I included in the cost estimate for bringing in the the, um, the expanding the surface area into the village that that would be money really earmarked for uh, for the improvements and up upgrade of the the Oceana Marin systems which seems to be in need of funding to do that so I, I think maybe further discussion of that might uh, might uh, help to uh, to allay some of the concerns that the district expressed. The, the district also did express, I think, an interest in transitioning away from operating wastewater systems in West Marin. This is the only one I think they have operated others in the past uh, to refocus their district solely on uh, their mission for water supply. Um, and that's a discussion about whether or not some other in, uh, uh, institutional arrangement, such as a community service area, community services district, um, or, or sanitation district, something of that nature could be considered. Um, and I think that's, they, they want a discussion on that with the county and I think RD and Greg are working in that direction to to set that up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, next question I have, question number four. Uh, if we do need to change um, Dillon Beach septic tanks and cannot join an existing sewer system, where can Dillon Beach build a sewer system? And how much will that cost? Mm -hmm will be responsible to pay for that so um, I think it will be very expensive um, that all in conclusion I can say that um, that it will be um, a very expensive affair to have a standalone kind of a septic system or something similar to what um, um, is mentioned in the question so it will be better to have um, the alternative 3A, 3B, or 4, as as uh, Norm mentioned in the report, that will be much more feasible and more uh, is the is better as compared to having a standalone septic system. Yeah, we we did um, in in formulating the alternatives, we did uh, look at at a conceptual level, 
and or preliminary level at a separate system from Oceana Marin. Uh, and but it would be a, essentially a parallel, very very similar system uh, to because it would require collection of the sewage, pumping it out, um, and I think the direct, the way out of the 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 Dillon Creek watershed would be up uh, the uh, Dillon Beach Road and over the divide to agricultural land if some could be identified at an appropriate location, um, that would be, and, and so it would basically look very similar to what Oceana Marin has, but it would be, uh, it would be then supported by an even smaller community than Oceana Marin, which, which uh, uh, North Marin uh, manages there. So uh, I think that, that would, uh, and the cost would be high because you'd end up not just building the collection system, but a transmission line, a new treatment system, um, whether it's irrigation or leach field and winter storage ponds, all those things would be, uh, would be, uh, uh, very expensive and, and in a sense just duplicate what uh, we believe is is feasible by connecting to Oceana Marin. Yeah. Um, question number five, if large scale infrastructural changes are necessary to address this issue, can we explore an expanded water treatment facility for the Dillon Beach area that filters wastewater so it can be reused Indirect potable reuse. There are water treatment companies as close at Napa County, if we need to see examples. Um, yeah, expanded water treatment facility for the Dillon Beach area. I am not sure. Is it expanded water treatment facility? Um, um, that they mentioned here? The so the, the only thing that I can think of rather than building another advanced treatment system, uh, which uh, uh, they get, it gets very expensive uh, the, and the requirements that are, that go along with it for small communities to take on the, the level of, of monitoring, testing uh, for a indirect, potable reuse project are, are, are it would be extremely onerous and, and, and probably not, not to consider, but one, possibly one alternative, if the, if the issue comes down to addressing the nitrate in the groundwater that's affecting the drinking water system, uh, adding nitrate nitrogen removal from the, uh, the coast springs water system uh, through uh, some additional advanced treatment, that would be more likely an, an option, but it would, it's not something that, you know, that's a, that's a private, privately held water company. Um, and I don't, you know, but, but th that would be the, that would be the way to, to perhaps address the nitrate issue with a treatment process as opposed to collecting the sewage and then trying to treat it yeah. to that same level. I agree. Um, next question I have is, what is the next step now for 2023? So the next step that I can answer here, the next step here is we are going to be here, did the presentation in front of you guys. We have the report and then we already mentioned four alternatives in that report. Um, as a community, um, we want to you guys to come up with the with the best alternative, the choice that everybody is okay in making. And once we have that alternative in front of us, then we'll uh, go ahead and look at the what you have selected. As um, Nord mentioned, that we need at least fifty one percent vote um, to move ahead in this project. So it's very important. Um, for community to come and then uh, pick up, pick the best alternative or the choice that they think that they should move on. So after that, we will 
um, looking at those, summarizing the results, and then the, uh, we will move on then what community has decided. Could I ask another question? Yes, please. Uh, Norm, um, since the, the, the study is focusing on a wastewater system uh, change, um, either management or upgrade of existing septic facilities or community-wide sewer system. Um, and this is driven by the impacts on the water supply system that exists. And it appears, to, and the suggestion is it's getting worse or could get it worse. Um, is, is, there any, is there any possibility that we that, that there's a need to focus on the water supply problem or the water supply uh, system and as an, an alternative to a this new wastewater system that's being proposed. In other words, right now the focus is on well number four, I gather, that in the Coast Spring system, which is now Cal Water, is is it is there an alternative with a relocation of that well, say upstream? That may would make a difference, or for that matter, another another water supply source up near where uh, Oceana Marin has its water. In other words, is it, is there a water supply alternative, a new water supply alternative that right. might be comparable in cost, even less? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I understand the question. I, um, we, We've done some work both with Cal Water on their system and also Estero Mutual. And uh, I, I think as a general statement, I can say that water supply is a more difficult problem for Dillon Beach than wastewater. They uh, just the, the lack of water, the, the aquifer there at the base of Dillon Creek is kind of an amazing feature that has allowed the you know the 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 area to to survive for i think so many years because the the uh, upland wells that uh, there i think there are probably maybe 8 or 10 in the the coast springs system that uh, vary in production from half a gallon a minute to maybe one or two gallons a minute, really not even mm -hmm. what, what you would need for a, a typical residence for a, a new well. Uh, Ocean, uh, Estero Mutual is, is uh, similar. There's, their water comes from collecting surface runoff and storing it in a, their large reservoir. They have a period through the winter when they can collect, collect runoff from the drainage that, that goes to the, to the Estero. Uh, down at the base of that, and then they pump it up back up to the top of the hill, 480 feet or whatever it is, uh, and store it, uh, and then uh, deliver from them. But their groundwater resources, the only groundwater resource of significance is the aquifer at the base of Dillon Creek. So it's a pretty, it's a, a pretty important resource. It, it, at least that's, you know, my my opinion and, and view on it. So, so there there isn't a very really obvious alternate uh, uh, water uh, water source. If I could follow up on that, so basically, a sterile mutual system is tapped out. There's not you don't see there's much room for more supply in that direction or nearby. And relocating upstream, the well number four will not alleviate the problem in terms of impact on water quality? Yeah, so as you go upstream, you get out of the alluvium and you get, uh, then the, the creek is basically running on uh, bedrock. And, but when it comes to the, you know, comes just happens to be right where the village is. And then there's a, there's a big fan, alluvial fan of sands and other, some gravel layers that have just uh, deposited over the years, and that's filled with fresh water. And every year it gets replenished. Depends on you know, how much. It depends on the 
how much uh, you know the rainfall year, but it it does fill up year to year, and then that becomes a, an actually a, a quite good uh, uh, freshwater source for the the coast springs, and there I think their well number four was uh, that was put in in the 1940s, uh, I believe. Something. Do you have any comment or any other question, Eric, or shall I move on to the next question? No, that's fine. I, I assumed, just assumed that Norm would be making those conclusions and I just was wanted to probe them for. Yeah. Uh, to see if there, yeah, there's, there's, there's any room for, there's, there's, for maneuver. It's yeah. yeah. Um, question number seven, does the new completed alternative when finished allow for choice or will every occupied unit in the designated area to be required to participate? Do you wanna take that question Norm or um, I think, in Marshalls, we if it was required to participate. I remember um, in phase one, but if you have already yeah. a septic that is um, conforming to the standards and it's class one or class two, then you don't mm -hmm. have to be um, required to hook up to the system. That's my that, understanding. Right. So it, there's there's no law that says you can't can't uh, define uh, a a, a sewer service area and leave some properties out. So in, in the Marshall, it was, it was uh, developed as a volunteer, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, it, uh, participation. And we looked at different levels of participation as we went through. Ultimately, 98% of the, the people along the system connected. And then there, I think there were two that did, two or three that didn't, and yeah. later one of them joined in a few years later. But um, so it's it's possible to create an assessment district that leaves out certain parcels if they happen to be particularly large and suitable uh, for retaining a septic system that meets standards. And I think that that's a possibility. Um, the parcels are just so small. Uh, that you know, we didn't we didn't go through and say well these are candidates for that but there could be that that that's a possibility um, but um, I think the more the more people that are connected to it uh, that you know they think that that um, the costs are spread farther so people are you know, it reduces the individual cost if the if the service areas. Uh, uh, catching all of the people, but it, it can be uh, the, the the rules allow you to define a service area and exclude those. And and I think the, the county's approach in the past has been to to uh, to help move projects along to make that option available. Yeah, and I, I do. I want to I want to backtrack to the the question about water supply. I completely forgot that. There is one um, gigantic water source, but unfortunately it's not available. And that is the dunes uh, of Lawson's Landing. That has enough fresh water for everything and, and more, but it, it's in a, a conservation easement and exporting water from that large it's, it's like a it's like a big sponge there it just fills there's no runoff just rainwater collects and there's a huge volume of fresh water there i have a question with um what you just mentioned if one of the residents mm -hmm. selects to opt out of the sewer system mm -hmm. in order to qualify to be uh, you know, opting out, mm -hmm. a test of their um, existing um, septic tank and drainage fields would be required. Correct? Uh, yeah, I think that I think <laughs> it would be appropriate to that to 
to uh, for that that kind of approach to establishing the service area to establish uh, certain requirements for that system uh, that include just to see that to see that it's functional, but also to see that it meets minimum requirements that would be equivalent or perhaps even higher than the county's class two standards. Okay, so it it for instance, if it's in an area that is tributary to the the uh, aquifer and the drinking water supply that that opting out might include some advanced treatment. Um, so some some type of inspection uh, 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 under certain standards that would be developed that would be part I think part of the that, that would be part of the the way to implement that okay. opt in opt out uh, mm -hmm. uh, approach. Okay, because I have a double parcel. So I have I have the area to have my filtration. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm. Uh, it was designed very well. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I, yeah. So you could I, be a candidate for what I I mentioned. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the last question that we have um, is address in summary the technical questions sent from um, Colin Wilder. And I look at his um, questions and it, it looks more of like comments than question, but the majority of them, the, he's talking about the nitrate level um, point is four, which is less than MCL and called in the report as an actionable level. It mentions that the contributors most likely are the septic tanks and possibly the cows upstream. And so is the nitrate level below MCL and the actionable levels, but natural groundwater contaminated by any human sources often contains nitrates at this level as well. So I think Norm, you sent some, um, the report regarding the shallow shallow um, um, shallow wells and the contamination of groundwater with nitrates to the tech members. I believe that was one of the study that was done in Oregon showing that the contamination could be happening because of the shallow um, wells as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you wanna take anything else, add anything else extra to that um, comment that Mr. Colin Wilder gave it mm -hmm. mentioned in his email about the Possibly septic tank. Uh, he's, I think, talking more about the nitrate level as 4 MCL, and it could be contributing mm -hmm. by the cows upstream or like something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, he had asked to be to, to see some studies uh, addressing the impacts of septic systems on groundwater nitrate, and that was with the U.S. Geological Survey study, a fairly comprehensive study and a whole program up in this area of Eastern Oregon. Um, but regarding, I mentioned before that I think it's it's reasonable to do some surface water sampling to have, you know, to, to, I think, to check that to see just what, uh, what, what is washing through from the watershed to, into the, to the aquifer. But uh, also, there's a fair amount of water quality sampling done under operating permits for the uh, for the uh, septic systems in Marin County and systems that are monitored or, or or regulated by the Regional Water Quality Control Board. And there's so there's a fair amount of background knowledge in, in Marin County looking at at groundwater that may be affected by agriculture or just natural sources. So it's not like we, we and, and we use that from time to time as a as a point of reference. So um, it's not something that that uh, was uh, you know, was ignored. It's just that there that those those sorts of data are available. They don't indicate the concentrations that are showing up in the in well number four, uh, when we look at natural or background or even uh, uh, agricultural land area runoff. Thank you, Norm. Um, pretty much that's what I can see from um, the 
email that he sent to us. Um, is there anything else that you would like to ask here? I guess I have a question. Um, I'm not even sure how to phrase it, but so if, if we are solving a problem with drinking water and we have wastewater that exists and we're looking for an alternative to the current way that we're dealing with wastewater so that the that won't contaminate our drinking water supply. And and we also have a guess that the drinking water supply is under threat why we would not be considering a system wherein we do reclaim our wastewater, because that seems to solve that. And I think the answer is that it's a really expensive way to deal with that. Um, but if, if we put in an, ex an expensive treatment option, I mean, I'm sorry, sewer option that is maybe not super popular with the community and also costs something. Um, is there not a way to combine the two and get a bigger grant and figure that out so that it is a, there are treatment systems that do that. I know they're in bigger communities than what we have here, um, but have you guys looked at the cost of that and the feasibility of that? If we did a massive upgrade to what the what Marin, you know, which was up in Oceana Marin currently, do we know the answers to that? Is it really too expensive? Because I feel like one one answer could answer the other question. Yeah. So um, the original. Oceana Marin system, instead of going to a leach field, went to spray irrigation, but mm -hmm. spray irrigation for pasture, uh, and, which is a form of water recycling, but it, it doesn't go back into the community. The, the difficulty in finding a way to put it back in the community is to find uses that can take advantage of recycled water. So like toilet flushing in public buildings and parks and that sort of thing. That would be, so in Dillon Beach, maybe the, the beach restroom would be an area where you could use recycled treated water, okay? Uh, but you couldn't do it at all of the individual homes. So you wouldn't, there's, you know, very, and there's not that much irrigation if you had a golf course. And, you know, I think years ago, someone had a golf course planned farther up, uh, out somewhere nearby, but um, yeah, so, so golf course irrigation, crop irrigation, maybe, but there's, that's, uh, I think the, the, the most uh, beneficial use and, and it's, it is for pasture irrigation. And there's also those who are advocating re water reuse and irrigation to improve the soil for carbon sequestration and carbon farming. So that might be the the link to some funding sources mm -hmm. to help bring the cost down, but finding actual water recycling uses in the community, in a residential community is pretty difficult. I don't know some, in some areas around the Bay Area, they'll, they'll uh, and mostly in the South Bay, they do have an advanced water recycling program, and it goes back to to uh, irrigate uh, 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 you know median strips and uh, parks and and other lawns and 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 vegetation landscaping within mm -hmm. the, the the urban areas. But that's that would be creating another. Uh, another need for water that's that there, there just isn't that big of a demand for irrigation water from what what uh, we can tell and we've been told in 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 the community so but putting it to agriculture i think is uh is a is an avenue and that that is something that was discussed um 
just in kind of general conceptual terms with North Bryn Water District, yeah. their permit needs to get updated because it was issued in 1992 and the regional water board is on track to do that. And it could be that, that that's something not that difficult to to add to their system. They uh, so that, that that might be the the best in the direction of water recycling. Okay, thank you. Norm, if I could follow up on that, do you think there is a potential for the demand for more irrigated pasturage in the surrounding area? Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that, that, that they, you know, we were given names of some of the landowners there. We never got to, to the point of, of engaging them, but I, I think it's worth, uh, I think irrigated pasture, the, the Lawson's Landing, they're in the process of completing their wastewater system upgrade, and they will be irrigating themselves six acres, and they are getting financing, uh, private financing through uh, what's the, it's called the PACE uh, program, but it's for energy and water conservation. Um, so that's, that's uh, was helpful to them to get low, low interest financing for that part of their project. So six acres for that, that facility there, which is smaller than the kind of the projected build out of Oceana Marin, but it could be, it could be, 15 or 20 acres, maybe, I, and I don't know if that's that's uh, worthwhile from an agricultural standpoint. But but um, if it's if it is, and if it's helpful to uh, to acquire funding, um, that 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 might be, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but here, yeah, here not. But when. We are thinking about that we have to move from the secondary treatment to tertiary or something like that. That may increase our cap our capital cost in treating. Well, the yeah, the, yeah. The, the thing about pa about uh, pasture irrigation, unless you're dealing with milk uh, uh, cows, um, the level of treatment is pretty. It's it's secondary plus disinfection. So it's 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 that's doable. It's not a not a sophisticated treatment system to make it uh, available for. Uh, for pasture irrigations. Any other question? If do you have? I could, could I make another uh, question or comment? Um, yeah. I think Norm, you brought up that an interesting idea involving the, um, which you immediately quashed with the, your, your comment about the Lawson's Landing uh, sponge. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I personally would like to know more about that circumstance situation and I could, I could communicate with you offline if that's permissible. Sure, okay. Mm -hmm. If there's a, if I could get a way to do that, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, there, there was a study done um, in the 1980s of you know, that in which they estimated the volume of of water available in the dunes uh, of uh, the Lawson's Landing area. And, and could I could I ask yeah. for any communication? Could I have an email or something I could talk to you about that? Uh, yeah, I, I can provide that to you. And, and if, if you, uh, I, I think my Email is on the the, the chain. There. Yeah. So okay, yeah, you, you write to me directly. I I, I can I can uh, talk with you or get you some more information. I'd be grateful. Thanks. Yeah. Eric, I'm here. This is Nicole. Who's saying that, that you're here? Nicole Vogler. Hi, Nicole. From Lawson's Landing. <laughs> yes. We I have, have an echo. So my computer is right next to me. Let me move. I'll mute it. <laughs> um, 
So I think we are beyond, I, I don't think we are actually beyond our time. It's supposed to be at 7.30, it's 7, almost 7.50 right now. So I thank you everybody for coming here and listening to us. We'll keep in touch. And um, I mentioned here, I gave the website here, uh, Marin County HS, uh, Dillon Beach web page. So please subscribe on that web page so that whatever, whenever we update any information on the website, Your you volume. will get the updates. Um, right, well, we'd like to thank you also for being open and discussing everything with us. We appreciate your taking the time. Thank you, Melinda. It's all because of all your support. And um, uh, so we really appreciate all your support, your emails and your um, uh, thank you letter that that email is like uh, uh, we know that we are getting a lot of support from the community members so thank you so much everybody and that being said um, um, please update on the website and um, have a great evening everyone all right, all right thank, thank you everybody you. Good night. thank you bye, bye. Okay. bye.